Here's a video on effectively using Page Optimizer Pro. This video assumes that you have watched the, the videos on uh, choosing your competitors as well as um, how to set up your project. If you have not seen those, they're very important, especially choosing your competitors. Please uh, pause this and watch that first uh, before getting to this. But here's a uh, an example on how to use Page Optimizer Pro. This is a live example. This is a, a real use case. And um, I would like to thank Paradise Med Spa, which is a med spa in Phoenix for quite nicely allowing me to um, uh, use their page as a guinea pig. One thing that they want to rank for is uh, Smart Lipo Phoenix. Uh, they have a page for it on their site. And this is what the page looks like. And I grabbed this from uh, the archive. So you can see what the original page looked like. And, and here it is. So this Smart Lipo here, this is a, um, an H1. These are H3s more likely done for uh, just aesthetic purposes uh, when the page was originally built. This page is, is a, a couple years old. As you can see, there, there actually wasn't an archive.org from 2019. So archive.org isn't crawling the site very deeply or very often, but there was one from 2018. I think that's about how old the page is. It's a, it's a little over a year, maybe two years. Uh, this area down here, this is par paragraph text that's bold. That's a list. And then that's another H3. Um, and then there's a video and then some before and afters. So this is the page. It's uh, currently ranking number 12 for Smart Libel Phoenix. And obviously they would like to get to page one is kind of the goal. So I ran Page Optimizer Pro. And the first thing I did is I actually put Smart Lipo as two different words and I didn't realize that it was one word. And this is kind of part of the investigative process when, you are, when you're doing your SEO. And then I realized that actually it's Smart Lipo is what I need to do. That's what I want to optimize for. You will win the smart lipo with the space by optimizing for this one, but this is the top level term because this is the correct way to say it. And Google seems to understand that this is the correct way, but it's actually one word. So I reran, and you can see that their overall score was uh, 42. Uh, not super great. When you first come in to a page, what you want to do is uh, come into the summary page and take a look at where things are at. The summary page can really give you an idea of, of how well your page is doing. You can see in the in the areas where we've got keyword optimization, um, you can see that there are two under-optimized signals for the exact keyword. There are seven for the variations. There are 13 for LSI. Uh, and they have some things that are over. But the point here is to see where these things sit in terms of um, you know, how red they are versus how orange they are, what you should be focusing on first. If you read through the best practices, and if you haven't been there before, the best practices are, are here. Um, I highly recommend reading them. You're going to want to start with the items that are under-optimized as an, as an order of operations and, and bring those closer to um, the green. Obviously, the closer the green you can get on all these things, the better. Uh, in this case, they don't really have much in the green, uh, except for their exact keyword. That's not too far off, so that's great. So that's, that's an easy fix. Then we're looking at variations. Then we're looking at LSI. So you also want to work in that order as well. Keyword, exact keyword, variations, LSI, getting things into the green is the goal, starting with the ones on the left. If this kind of dual look view is not for you, click details and you can see it broken out. So this is the exact keyword. Notice here we're pretty good in the green with the exact keyword. Here's our keyword variation under and over. Here you can see we've got some issues and we want to start with those over. And then obviously LSI has some issues as well. So that once you have a feel for where this page is at, that there's optimization that can be done, the next thing you want to do is look at your word count. Um, in this case, their word count for their target is 1,000, and, and we're at 1,100. When you are this close, then you're going to want to start with the regular recommendations. Once you kind of get out into this orange area, uh, that's where you want to use the adjusted recommendations. Adjusted recommendations are, rec are recommendation, recommendations that are adjusted based on your current word count rather than uh, recommendations based on this target ideal. Uh, Right here, you can see that they're within uh, a good distance. We, we like to see something no more or less than 10 to 20% higher or lower, and they're a little bit higher, and that's fine. Uh, if you find that you are down here, let's say you were this site that's in the minimum, our recommendation would be to add words to the page. There's a lot. You can see that they're deficient in and, and LSI and, and keyword variations, and that's often what you would see when, you're, when your keyword count is low. Our recommendation is to go high. If you are above, before you reduce any keyword, uh, any word count, what we do recommend is going with the adjusted recommendations. Also on the summary page, you can see what I selected. So I have a, a good mix here of competitors. Uh, previously, we would 
would have um, said to ignore real self and Groupon, but Pop can now handle those. And the algorithm has gotten much, much smarter and, and how to deal with pages like this. So they're in there. But I chose for my focus competitors, uh, some of the sites that are actually local sites, sites that would be like this page, would be competitors just like mine. So the recommendation, and again, please watch the competitors video if you haven't, but the recommendation is basically put in the top ranking sites and then for your focus competitors, choose uh, the ones that are just like yours. And, and that will give you then two forms of, of optimization or two things to look at. So as we go into the recommendations, Pop will give you the top recommendations first, the most important things. So this screen is showing me that uh, I need uh, my target term in my meta title, my H1. If you notice the previous page only had some smart lipo, I wanna go after smart lipo Phoenix, it'd be wise to get smart lipo Phoenix in my H1 and then also in my meta title. Within Pop, you can then see all the recommendations, the high priority ones are not an exact keyword. That's about it. Um, you see this from time to time with keywords where the exact phrase is not used a lot, but variations of it are. And so here are the, um, the recommendations for variations. And, and I'm changing this view uh, up here by going through these different areas, but then you can also look at the highest things. You can see all the signals. You can see things that have then been resolved and why they're resolved by clicking through these different views. Uh, next is LSI. You can click to hide if that's a bit too much to look at at the beginning, and you can see where you're at. You can look at just the high priority recommendations, all the recommendations, resolve recommendations, etc. cetera. Uh, one very powerful part of Page Optimizer Pro is the ability to compare data. So if we're in this variation section, and let's say we're looking at all of our recommendations, Something that I can do is I can pull in the focus competitors. These are those ones that I pulled out and I can actually then compare my data with the entire group versus also those focus competitors to see um, what's going on with those ones that are just like me versus the, the entire page one. Uh, we can then add in say the max values. I can change the color just so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, this is the highest mark. These are good sanity checks. Um, between the, the focus and the, and the regular recommendations, if you want a more conservative approach, you can go with a lower number of these two. So, for example, uh, um, here in H2s, on the regular ones, uh, it says to uh, increase variations by one, and the focus says to increase by three. So what you could do if you wanted a more conservative approach is that you could go with the one. Um, you could go with a more aggressive approach and go with three. Or you could look at just to see like, what is the highest? You know, say you've done one and nothing happened and then three and nothing happened. This is the top mark. Here is seven. So it kind of gives you that upper limit when you're doing your optimization. I would, what I would normally do is, is go with the lower of the number. Go with something more conservative. Um, see how the page responds and then decide if you want to go a little bit more aggressive or if you need, or in a situation where you need to go hyper aggressive. Hyper -aggressive. So in this case, what I really want to do is I want to focus on, um, uh, especially on the first run, is I just want to make a few changes. It, it's very important to be able to track what you're doing, uh, monitor your changes, and only make a few changes at a time, and then watch how the page responds. So I know that I need, uh, from the exact keyword, I need I need to get my target keyword into these two places, and so that's what I will do, and that's what I did. And then for variations, I'm looking at some of the um, uh, the higher one, higher more important ones. The signals are listed in a um, in an order that's pretty good in terms of strength, our most important signals. So here, uh, meta title H2, H3. Now notice the H3, it's a mid-level. It's not as high a priority as, say, this paragraph text. And so I'm going to leave that out for the moment. Uh, I'm not as concerned about things that are over-optimized. I'm more concerned about things that are under-optimized to start. So I'm not going to worry about that. And we know that this page actually has H3s on it is kind of what they were doing but they didn't have any H2s and H2s are, are, are more important. So what I ended up doing was kind of following these top level results with the exact keyword and the variations. And I decided to put LSI off uh, for a minute just to see what, what we could do. I came in and I added Smart Lipo Phoenix to um, this H1. I added it to the meta title. I changed these H3s to H2s. Um, you can see that the aesthetically it makes no difference but it, organizationally, that's a little bit better. Uh, I made this, and by the way, you can always check by clicking inspect. So I made this an H3 um, so that I do have some semantic order. And then 
one thing that I didn't show just now is that I noticed that H5s could have used a little bit of a bump. And they had this um, small paragraph text right here. And even though it's slightly out of semantic order, that's okay. Uh, I just did one thing and I did it as an H5 because H4s and H5s are often quick indexers and I wanted Google to, to run this page quickly and see if I couldn't get some, some quick benefits out of it. Um, so I made this an H5. So it is slightly out of semantic order in that I go H2, H5, H3, H2, but one thing out of order is, isn't gonna kill it. So I made these changes. I made a few changes to um, adding in some of those variations that were missing in the paragraph text, uh, a few other small tweaks like that. And then I reran pop. And if you saw from the, from the first page, um, so my improvement here was about 20%. Let's open that up. What's again great about pop is the, um, again, the ability to compare. And so you can compare against previous runs. And so I'm gonna compare against that last run. Um, and I'm gonna show the high priority stuff. Actually, I took care of it, so it doesn't exist. Um, but we can see that in all the signals here. So the former current, zero, zero, Meta title H1 now have one, so so that's what I did. Uh, by virtue of adding things in in text, I ended up putting in two into paragraph text, uh, and that was just as I was reworking things. Notice that that's a mid-level issue. So while it was good before, as a result of doing this kind of stuff, I I ended up adding two, and that's okay. That's actually affecting my score. Why my score wasn't higher? I'm not going to reduce those right now. There's no point in doing that small little tweak, especially when it's a mid-level issue. There are other issues that are probably more important. And I want to see how this page responds. So I added in these H1s over in variations. Um, you can see former in the meta title. Uh, there was one and now there's three. So it went over a little bit just because as I was making it a little more readable. Again, with the H1, I'm over just a little bit. H2 over just a little bit. Uh, H3s went under because I changed those uh, back. So again, that's something to think about. But so you can see that my score, uh, I'm, I'm edging towards being a little bit over. And I'm more concerned about making sure that those unders get up and especially the, the higher priority uh, issues um, to go up. So uh, here before in variations, I need to increase. And I went over just by two. The score does adjust. There is a it's not an all or nothing according to the score. Uh, but you can see why I have a 64 percent instead of maybe I would expect with these tweaks, just doing these higher level things to be more in the 70 plus kind of range. And I didn't quite get there just because I went over just a little bit. But that's OK. And that's the point that I kind of want to make is that you don't need to get it exact. Well, you know, if you look back at the summary page, we're looking at ranges here and we're trying to get things closer to green, but they don't have to be exactly, exactly on it. And that's an important point. So uh, I ran these changes. I just made those handful of changes. I, I reworked the structure just slightly. So it's something that I prefer a little bit more. And then um, we reran it. And um, just about four days later, so Smart Lipo Phoenix, uh, we're now sitting at uh, number three. And what's fun, if you do Smart Lipo on its own, um, you do get localized results without the, the Google tag, or excuse me, the, yeah, the, the Geo tag. And if you scroll down, we are one, two, three, four. So not bad. So again, you don't have to make all the changes to get the score up to where it needs to be. Uh, you do need some perspective on what's more important and what's not, and I hope this provided some guidance. Uh, what I would do from here, so you could see that I ran this on um, on September 1st, and you can see that it really didn't take me any time at all. So 159 ran the page, did the implementation that I did, which probably took me less time than <laughs> to say it, and then I reran it 216. And I didn't make any changes after that. And I, again, because I noticed that as I added in some things to kind of bring up uh, what was deficient from this original run, I did pop over just a little bit on some things, but nothing that put me into some bad areas. And so that's why I, I don't want to roll them back this when I want to go. And you can see that um, we went from 12 to, to three for the target term and uh, um, about the same 12 to four. I don't know, I didn't actually check Smart Lipo on its own, but I assume it was probably about the same spot. But now it's certainly locked into page one. So you can get page one results uh, in uh, the amount of work, obviously I'm probably a little more proficient than most people with the tool, but you know, 17 minutes worth of work. Uh, and then four days later, we're on page one, uh, from page two. And now smart lipo is, is not the most difficult 
competitive term of all time. There's not a lot of traffic for it, but these are the kind of things that if you can move from page two to page one and you grab a couple of clicks and it took you 20 minutes, you know, that becomes an effective use of your time. And I think that's something that Page Optimizer Pro can do. I do also want to point out that um, your score doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I went over a little bit as I was tweaking and that's okay. I'm going to leave, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let it go for about two weeks. And then what I'll, what I would do in the, from here is then do a few more tweaks, but I'd be focusing still on those things that were under optimized or other things that are over optimized. See if I can't move up another spot or two. And it's possible I might be able to, it's possible that three is as good as it's going to be with on page. And uh, from there, you know, it's links and other signals, but uh, this is how you can effectively use page optimizer pro for your pages. Please take a look at this and watch the other videos if you haven't. And um, feel free to hit me with any questions uh, in the IMG uh, pop support channel. All right. Thanks so much.